to introduction sir uh, actually uh, today might not be uh, make all the test for the audience but i am going to discuss few ecgs uh, this is a ecg male 71 years hypertension diabetes post pca patient chest pain on minimum exertion i came to my chamber and i did the angiogram so i just want to know uh, what would be the coronary relation for this patient either lcx LED proximal left main disease tr triple basal disease or nano uh, so i just want to know a patient having uh, chest pain on minimum exertion so uh, where could be the lesion patient having previous uh, standing on left main to led and uh, that is bifurcation lesion uh, lcx so uh, Ribu, can you uh, can we get the poll, please? Uh, yes, sir. Starting Tamil Bhai, please start the poll. One, two, three, four, or the participant can. Not getting poll still. If poll is not possible, can we get someone fellows to discuss the ECG place and predict the relation in the coronary could be? So any volunteer? You can raise your hand, volunteer, please. Is there a Nepali friend? Oh, uh, poll already been given. So LED proximal is the maximum answers, right? Let's see what has actually happened in this patient. So there is a severe disease, trip, uh, left pain disease with LCX 99%, LED 90% and left main 90%. So this patient actually uh, and does not have any uh, support from the RCA even. This patient developed severe chest pain in the night. I, I recommended urgent CBC and patient was waiting for the next CBC. Patient developed severe chest pain and uh, uh, patient is in shock at night. So surgeon had, has to come to do CABC in the night and see is done at night. Uh, just a few days back, uh, I did the angiogram. So this is very important thing is that if you look into the ECG again, definitely this is a LBBB. And at the same time, there is some ST elevation in AVR and V1, V2 as well. And more important is the patient having uh, chest pain on minimum exertion. And one thing I already told, patient having stent in left main to LED and LCX bifurcation. So that one of the clue point, uh, the where could be the disease. That is very important for this patient group, but ECC does not totally fit with left main. 
Am I clear, sir? If, sir, uh, from okay. the, yes, sir. Okay. First yeah. something, what I learned by reading the three books, if there is Lebanon plot, it's very difficult to identify which vessel is involved. Definitely right. it is uh, LAD most likely because of uh, Lebanon plot as it supplies the vesicles. But uh, uh, it is very difficult to discern whether this is which artery is involved. And secondly, uh, ST elevation in B1 is minimal. Minimal. I minimal. Don't. And normal patient may have two spectrum with this type of ST elevation. So in LVB, if you want to diagnose acute MI, at least five millimeter elevation is required according to the criteria. So far, I, I remember. Now, this is some, to some extent, it, uh, it, this is to some extent ex, uh, stable angina and patient developed, a uh, uh, patient was yeah, unstable yeah. after uh, angiogram. Uh, and right. again, another thing is, I did several angiogram with this type of LVG with normal coronary. Right, but that is why I have given some clues. Yeah. Now, having yeah. block always indicate there is some underlying Either coronary artery disease or myocardial disease. Uh, but patient having but the clinical may be, symptoms. It may be normal coronary disease. Right, could be. And still, patient having a chest pain on minimum exertion. Yeah. With stent in left pain to LAD and LC uh, Symptom is very suggestible. Very suggestive. Critical. That, uh, the disease. only ECG is not uh, the uh, yeah. suggestive, yeah. but yeah. symptom is very much suggestive. Thank you, Anatha. So I, I think this is interesting because again it brings us to if I gave this ECG without any history, we may not we will not think much about it as Jamil uh, yes, mentioned. Uh, but so the clinical scenario. But one of the interesting thing that after the cardiac cath, uh, cath, what we would have done, we would have put a balloon pump in this patient, and that would have hopefully prevented this in the middle of the night cabbage um, uh, give us some time. So that's one thing that we do with this kind of left main patients. Tofik sir, I have a yeah. question for you, if you, if you don't mind, sir. Sir, can I ask you a question? Sure, sure. Sir, in presence of, in presence of LBVB, yes. uh, with chest pain also, yes. can we think of uh, any other artery than LAD or CX or left wing? Uh, with this ECG? Can think about RCA in any way? Well, with so, this ECG, it's a wild guess. I think uh, the answer that the participants gave, I think was pretty good answer because they, uh, they just, it was a random pick. I mean, I just wonder one thing, I just, this is theoretical, that if you look at V6, V5, the T wave is positive terminally. Normally in left bundle, it is negative. Whether it means anything or not, I can't say, but that's kind of unusual for left bundle. Even in lead one, lead one, you can see the terminal part of the T wave is upright, but normally it's negative. I'm just, just an observation. I mean, there is no data on it, but normally we expect it to be negative. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, sir, basically my question was, our question was, that LBV is there, LBV is there, so that the RCA involvement is there, so that the RCA involvement is there. Of course, patient with left bundle can have RCA disease, right? No, I mean, if you have chest pain, you have to have a patient. Sir, so that the point is, uh, in just in this type of ECG actually it cannot pinpoint which artery is involved. A server saying this that's, is a random gas. Yes, sir. That's, that, that's very true. Yes, and just I will give you a scenario. Let's see a patient have a 90 percent blockade in uh, LAD and L6, and the RC is the principal feeder vessel. Now that used to have a 50 percent lesion that that uh, uh, plaque ruptures and it gets blocked. You see, the change will be like left wing disease. Differently. But the lesion is actually now, culprit lesion is now RC. So 
we should not pay too much attention to it. The point is, in this context, the main thing that he should take this as an SES and he should take this patient to the cath lab as early as possible. Again, one of the points that it happens all the time, when we say a patient is pain-free, it's such a vague definition. I always ask patients, Ali, do you have any funny feeling in your chest? If the patient tells me I am as good as I used to be six months ago, I said, fine. But if the patient said, look, I'm, I have just this funny thing I cannot describe. That means the patient is having chest pain. I think that's where we miss this patient, that we think that the patient is pain free. It happens even in my hospital, it happens that patient sitting all night with this mild discomfort as a hospitalist uh, did not pay attention because patient was not complaining of pain. That's a good case. Yes, Female patient, 57 years, diabetes, hypertension, necessitated cardiac arrest. ECG initially was at atrial fibrillation at first ventricular rate. Patient having kidney totally shut down, no urine output. Patient is on hemodialysis and hospitalized for the last two months. Ejection fraction was 35%, diagnosed as a uh, dilated cardiomyopathy and recently diagnosed. Patient was uh, is on Aspirate, statin, amiodarone, beta blocker, digoxin, RNA, electrolytes are normal. So this is the ECG. Uh, actually, it's a more, uh, lot of discussion to be <laughs> needed for this ECG uh, later on, sir. After getting the poll, uh, whether it is sinus syndrome, first degree, AV block weight, supraventricular ectopics, or sinus rhythm with first degree AV block with occasional normal AV conduction, sinus rhythm first degree AV block with ventricular ectopics or twist to one AV block. With ventricular ectopic. Most of uh, they are with sinus rhythm with first degree AV block with ventricular ectopic and few are sinus rhythm first degree AV block with supraventricular ectopic. And nobody said B. Nobody said B. <laughs> and sinus rhythm with first degree AV block with occasional normal AV conduction. So this is a very, very really difficult ECC for me as well. So I actually, I put the ECC for discussion purpose and I could not, uh, I'm, I'm, I'll be going with B. I'll be going with B, but nobody with me, that is a big question and big problem to me as well. <laughs> so who is going um, to discuss this? This, so it is a matter of discussion Actually, uh, first degree AV block is there. And this bit, whether it is sinus or supraventricular or ventricular, okay. definitely it is not ventricular. Okay. Yes. If, if you go with B, then my question is, you know, with the normal fear interval, fear complex is a little bit wider than the other bits, which has prolonged fear interval. But maybe the reason of this widening of the curve. It is not that much wider, a bit, a bit wider. A little bit, a bit wider, wider than the... A, a, a bit wider. That is a question mark. Yeah. So, uh, but if you look into the P-web, P-web character in the V1, this is by, uh, by physics. Also in V2. Sir. Yeah. So, so I think at, at the first glance, Yes, sir. It is number C. It is number C. Okay. Right. But if you look at P wave, the, this QRS complex that we are considering P, P, PVC, there is a P wave before each of them. Right, sir. And with the same interval. And that right, is sir. a big coincidence to happen. So yeah, I'm sure if I had this ECG, if I measure it, I'll find that the second 
PR interval is constant in all these wise. So that makes me think there is a relation between these two. I mean, it can happen uh, that, it, and, and how can I explain it that because the initial RR is longer and then it conducts, it, it conducts aberrantly. Which, it, it appears to be right bundle type of aberration, which fits in with the right bundle, bundle. right sir. Yes, right bundle. So my bet will be this was sinus syndrome, first degree AV block with occasional normally conduct AV conduction with aberration. I have seen sir. similar ECGs with alternating right sir. and left bundle bank block. Sir, can I ask a question? Yes. In that case, uh, in ABL, uh, ABR, as well as in lead one, the yes. normally conducted QRS complex axis is opposite to the regular interval QRS complex. What would be the explanation for this? Well, this patient is in having ischemia, right? Okay. Look at the ST segment. Sir, uh, there is another question. Yes. So, this is the T wave. This is yes. the T wave. Yes. This is the T wave. And this is because of digoxin toxicities. This patient. Right, sir. That's the patient of the digoxin. Interesting. Right, so the that, patient is getting uh, digoxin as well as beta blocker, emitter. All are getting this patient. Yeah. Uh, patient, uh, patient already getting digoxin and patient uh, kidney totally shut down. And uh, uh, beta gym. blocker, beta blocker, which beta blocker? Beta blocker, carvidol patient is Car getting carvidol. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, in that case, with all this electrolyte abnormality, I think I, I my bet is with the number two, uh, that it was sinus first degree AP block with conducted QRS with aberration. Uncle, and uncle, because uncle. of all this thing going on, the aberration is not, is not following any fantastic pattern. And also, if you right, look at right. the, if you look at the 12 DDCG, V1, V2, V3, before the R wave is small initially, right? Yes, sir. Yes, so there's, there's poor R reproduction, lead position is not in the right place, one or the other. But of course, um, Jamie's point is well taken that how come this is, is not fitting in with the typical description of bundle bank block. And it's not, uh, it is not, it is some form of uh, probably, it will be better described in non-specific interventricular conduction. But my still, my, my bet is with this, um, conducted because it's a big coincidence for this thing to happen in such a timely manner that the PR interval will be constant. Yes, yes. But then saying that, we also have to keep that option open that this is uh, a PVC, it just uh, because of the timing, it looks like conducted QRS complex. But I have seen similar ECGs in the past um, that, that patient came with two to one heart block and then there was some conducted one-to-one -one conduction. And the first bit was narrow, second bit was left bundle. I've seen that kind of ECGs. Sir, sir. Uh, yes. Professor. Yes. Sir, because of the uh, variation in the AV conduction, the yes. first and the second one, the second one is a bit uh, prolonged than the first one. Does this uh, prolongation of the conduction through AV node change its conduction velocity on the third bit? every third bit that is conducted with aberration that you say fits well, if we consider that. Well, it's because of the, you, have to, you can follow with the simple pattern of rate dependent aberration, because yes, sir, that sir. bit is coming early, QRS complex. And um, it is just like any other rate dependent aberration, or we see all this aberrant conduction with supraventricular premature bit, it can fit into this same pattern. My bet is, uh, but I'm surprised that nobody chose B. <laughs> I wish one person has chosen B. This is the first nobody. time I've... Sir, but... it's very hard, hard to choose B because uh, initially the PR is so prolonged. How can one PR is, uh, become so short? That is the uh, uh, yes. general confusion. But, but you know, what is the good news in this answer? That nobody chooses... So I'm, I'm thankful to the audience that they're not choosing it randomly. So <laughs> that is the good news of this thing. And I, I think this is the beauty of this course that, that the logical quick 
thinking would be C. And if somebody was choosing randomly, they would have some of them should have chosen B, but they did not, which I'm happy about it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, sir. This is the decoxin level, 3.96. Oh, my God. Female, 81 years, hypertension, admitted one week back with shortness of breath. Troponin was positive, CAZ done, and was found normal. Uh, this is one week back, uh, first admission. Then uh, this is the, it was the ECC, and what would be the diagnosis? Atrial fibrillation with first ventricular rate with right axis deviation, supraventricular tachycardia with right axis deviation, Atrial flutter with variable AV block with right axis deviation. Atrial flutter with variable AV block, no right axis deviation, and sinus arrhythmia. Libu, can we get the poll, please? So, if you can have a discussion, please. Uh, atrial flutter with variable AV block with right axis deviation. And so everybody has chosen all the choices this time. Right, sir. And Next everybody minute. must have a point. I wish somebody would come up and talk to us. So nobody is talking. Do you want me to talk or anybody, any other panelist? So I'm going to start with number one. Choice number one is correct because it is irregularly irregular, but it is wrong because I can see the waves which looks like a sawtooth in lead two, three AVF. Number B is correct. If I look at the second part of the ECG, the chest leads looks regular and I cannot see anything else. So if I had just the chest leads at that point, I can call it a supraventricular tachycardia. Of course, atrial flutter is also supraventricular tachycardia. But if I look at the first part of the ECG, that takes it away. So that goes out. Atrial flutter with variable block. C and D, both are correct. And the question is, is there right axis deviation? So if we look at lead one, initially it looks like that the positive and negative component are both same. If that was true, then it's 90 degrees, but it's a little bit more negative than positive. So that is right axis deviation. So I think the, the reason I presented it this way that when you answer a question, there should be rational for each answer. And I give you rational, and then I try to explain why that answer was not correct. And that will be a good way of analyzing this kind of ECG. Any, anybody else, any comment? Wadud? The, the beauty of this ECG is the baseline, as you, were, you always say, the ECG interpretation is actually uh, pattern recognition from your memory bank of pictograms. And that sort of the appearance that should be kept always in our mind. It should be fixed in there. And whenever we see this type of sort of, it's a tail flutter unless proved otherwise. The point is whether it is regular, two is to one, three is to one block or irregular block. This is another matter. That's the thing I would uh, always be uh, asking our uh, students to do. And if you consider a suspect 
there is a case of atrial flutter. Sometimes in V1, in case of atrial fibrillation, we get waves that looks like flutter. Please look at lead two or AVF. If you do not see flutter waves clearly in there, it's more likely to be atrial fibrillation rather than flutter. And if it is present there, it's very likely to be atrial flutter. And if you are near the patient, you can do the carotid message a little bit after auscultating and then do the ECG. Read, increase the AV block and you can see the flutter waves very clearly. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. So after one, after one week, patient again admitted in the hospital with chest pain and shortness of breath. Again, troponin is positive, maybe in the lower range. And what should I do then? CAG again. This is a sinus and T wave inversion with long QT. Did you do angiogram for the first time? Right. First time angiogram was normal. Wow. Right. Now, is uh, patient uh, admitted again with shortness of breath and chest pain as well? This is the this uh, this is the ECG patient admitted again. So, uh, did the patient go home on any antiarrhythmic amiodar? Patient was on, um, uh, no, no, sir. Uh, patient anti was on beta blocker. Uh, any anticoagulation? Anticoagulation patient was getting, right, sir. And, 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 and no, no neurological symptom? No neurological symptom. Patient is very conscious oriented. Do you have any previous EKG on the previous admission one week before? This yeah. is this. Is Oh, this is the EKG. It's okay. So we did angiogram again. No, let's let's no. talk about it. <laughs> let's let's talk, so let's let so what are the possibilities with this system? Right. One would be that maybe the reason I asked neurologic symptom, the symmetry inversion extensive and deep. Sometimes we see it in CBA. That's one thing that I thought of. Sometimes it happens. Right. Second will be an ischemic event. But how can somebody has ischemic event where the normal corner is? But one it thing can... that we have to keep in mind, patient was in flutter. Is it possible that uh, there is a clot, clot there and this closed and went into the coronary arteries? Mm -hmm. So let's see what you found. Uh, Actually, point, it may be my, no. myocarditis. Hmm? Myocarditis led to active flutter as well as this type of inversion. Now, actually, no, I... uh, uh, QT is prolonged. That is why I did uh, the electrolyte and magnesium level, and it is also normal. But what was her blood count? Then I decided the blood count is normal. Okay. And then I decided to do angiogram, but still it is normal. So I could not get. Now, do, the, can I see the LV gram on this patient? No, I did not do the LV gram. Okay. Echo uh, was Echo uh, was normal. Echo oh, okay. uh, uh, was normal, and I did the Echo by myself. And mm -hmm. his Echo is, is normal with restrictive pattern of diastolic dysfunction. Mm -hmm. The main concern is right now. Uh, uh, you know, it's very interesting uh, because the patient came with flutter. You did right. not do cardioversion, right? You just put antiarrhythmic or some medication, right? No, no. Then right? patient was reverted to sinus and patient was discharged. And what so medication she was on? She, uh, he, she was on beta blocker. Beta blocker. Beta blocker with anti, uh, uh, anticoagulant. Was given. Anticoagulant. So if it reverted spontaneously or by cardioversion? No, uh, spontaneously reverted to sinus. Sir, you know, the qu hey, question, right? Question right now that there is a, a spontaneous, you know, when the patient converted to sinus rhythm, uh, did she, uh, uh, when she came in, did she uh, came in only with chest pain? Any any other symptoms or only with chest pain? Chest pain and shortness of breath, breath as well. Actually, shortness patient initially was admitted under a uh, chest specialist. And uh -huh. whenever troponin was positive, then shipped it to me. And you know, at that time, we did the uh, anti probe NP, that was higher. 
and uh, troponin was higher. So, and when you uh, when you when the patient converted, uh, apparently the patient converted spontaneously, right? There is no cardioversion involved. Uh, no, uh, we have given beta blocker one. Just only. I think there's a good likelihood that probably had a clot that Dr. Rufik Ahmed mentioned earlier. A small clot might have went to the coronary. That's one possibility. You right. But, uh, but in uh, angiogram, we could not uh, get yeah, you know, it. You know, it might have good. dissolved. <laughs> yeah, well, right. Even though I mentioned clot, the, the thing about clot in AFib and flutter, these right. are very small clots right. that goes to the brain mm -hmm. and then they expand. They are not big enough to uh, block corner, even though I, I put it as a, as a consideration, but mm. normally the clots are very, very small clots, right, Ajit? Because the one that goes to the brain. Yeah, and actually I saw one patient I'm going to share, that patient had mitral valve issue, and there is some, and the patient uh, had, uh, you know, mechanical mitral valve and had a similar EKG presentation. And the small tiny clot went to the coronaries because the coronaries are clean when it did that. But the patient had ST elevation initially, and then uh, you know subsequently that. But definitely clot can go there. And that's you know always possibility because I don't see any other explanation though because patient did not have uh, you know you know what do you call uh, you know Takasuvo cardiomyopathy. Then we should have seen some a pattern of the LB gram or or echocardiogram. Actually, uh, that is why uh, that was my suspicion that patient might have mm -hmm. Takasuvo type of cardiomyopathy. Mm -hmm. That is why I did the echocardiogram by myself. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, so I have the to... pictures of echocardiogram as well, but not uh, uploaded here. But I have. But the reason is I'm I'm looking at the LV, you know the coronary angiogram right now. I see the how how the heart is moving. Looks like the patient has some sort of cardiomyopathy because the heart is not really squeezing well. Well, I know, but diastolic dysfunction is there, but systolic dysfunction not there. Yeah, but the shadow is not moving like vigorously or something. Okay, it's not like it's not LV gram though. I agree. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Sir, Ruby, sir, I have a question, sir. Yeah. Mm. Sir, sir, can it be memory effects, sir, after the termination of the... Yeah, but it's after one week. After one week is a question. Uh -huh. Well, the memory effect happens when you pace the ventricle. If somebody was in ventricular tachycardia, mm -hmm. you convert, you can see T inversion. Or somebody has been pacing. That is difficult to explain by just the memory effect. And it is such an extensive T inversion. And as I told you, it, it looks it similarly looks like the EKG that we see in CVA, massive CVA with QT prolongation. Right, sir. But I could not get the explanation. That is why oh. I have given here. That's interesting. <laughs> what yeah. was the potassium and magnesium level? Uh, that was normal. Uh, that I did. Initially, I thought this is hyper, uh, hypokalemia and uh, hypermagnesium could be. Was she getting amiodarone? Right? No. Not getting That's getting. Not getting, getting, no, not getting a meter. You know, but this this a, a, a cat looks like patient has cardiomyopathy because I don't see the heart is moving much, even with the uh, fluoroscopy. No, no, I did the uh, echocardiogram. I can show you the echocardiogram. If no, no, it's okay. I believe you. But... <laughs> no, I mean, if, if Ajit is correct, was the echo done same day or next day? Echo done uh, just before the angiogram. Just oh, so the, then, then Ajit, if it was Takasubu, you'd, if, sometimes it can happen that you do the angiogram today and you do the echo tomorrow or day after tomorrow. And I agree, I agree. Function that. may improve, but this was done before the mm -hmm. um, uh, angiogram, mm -hmm. so uh, we it, it's normal. Then I have to suspect just clot. There's no other explanation. But the question right now, that deep T wave inversion normally we can see. You you see know, the, uh, uh, can you see the... Echocardiogram. No, I, I believe you. I, I'm trying to figure it out because you know the shadow here doesn't move well. You know the a, a fluoroscopy you shadow. Can, you can see the echocardiogram. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Very good movement. Good. All right. Okay. I think we should move on, and we, we have been. It's almost one and a half hour. I think it's time to. <laughs> but, but, you always bring good, you good CGs. Very okay. interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Okay. Okay. Next. Uh, any more? No, sir. I think, shall we stop? It's one and a half hour now. Okay, sir. Sure. Okay, yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you.